you with Mary McCourt. Her daughter Helen was murdered by a man who has just been released from prison on parole despite the fact he's never revealed the location of Helen's body. Just a moment we'll be speaking to Samantha Gillingham who got in touch with us after seeing Mary's story. She finds herself in a similar situation but the killer in question is her own father. Now, Samantha's mum, Carol Packman, disappeared from the family home in 1985 and for years Samantha believed that she'd left of her own accord. Eventually she discovered that her father, Russell Causley, was to blame. blame. He was jailed for Carol's murder in 1996. He's currently serving a life sentence. Russell Causley has repeatedly refused to say what he did with Carol's body and now Samantha fears he'll be released on parole without ever having to tell the whole story. Or well, you can speak to Samantha now. She's in Northamptonshire with her son, Neil. Uh, Samantha, Neil, very good morning to you and thank you for your time this morning. Um, people will have just heard uh, what a terrible tragedy your family has been through. This is a, a dreadful ordeal and one that is clearly being dragged out for you even further by the knowledge that the person responsible is refusing to give you details of where a body is. Can you just explain wh what impact that is on you and your family? Uh, Samantha first. Hello, good morning. Um, it's relentless as far as the pressure that that puts onto us. And particularly over the past five years, we've been repeatedly asked um, to submit statements to the parole board um, to uh, in victim impact statements uh, and you know the pressure is on uh, just over a year ago my father um, was recommended to be put into an open prison we managed to get that reversed however we're being asked the question again we d we're not given an exact time as to when this is going to be we're on notice sometime again between now and possibly June that there'll be another hearing and it's hard work yeah, so the, the realistic proposition, and I know you saw uh, Mary McCourt uh, speaking on BBC Breakfast, you know exactly how she feels in terms of, of how much that eats away at you, the notion that someone could be freed whilst withholding that knowledge. He should never have been released. Um, you know, we're, 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 we're scrabbling now, to, you know, we're waiting for Helen's Law um, as to whether or not Helen's Law is going to give us what we need. Apparently the Parole Board um, uh, uh, looked at, took that into account when they actually considered with regards to Sims being released. And I find it quite worrying that that's going to be the same case with my father. My mother's been missing now for 35 years this June. My father over this past five years has submitted um, a statement where he went into quite graphic detail from his prison cell as to what he did with my mother back in 1985, only for police time, etc., to be wasted looking into that account, and then for him then to retract that account and say that it wasn't it wasn't correct. And at the same time, the parole board are also asking me the question: What are your thoughts um, right now as a victim on him being considered for release? It it. it Requires belief. Yeah. Neil, uh, if I could turn to you, I mean, I know you're hugely supportive uh, mm. of your mother and what she's trying to deal with, but you too, mm. you are living through this all together as a family, aren't you? Give, can you give us a mm. sense of, of what, how that impacts you? Yeah, it's, um, look, you know, it's something that's very, very alien um, to most people, you know. Um, I've always been aware that you know, it's something that's different in our family compared to, to most, um, you know, any victim of crime you know, it's horrific, you know, we're all in the same boat, you know, murder as a whole. But I think, you know, where with um, other cases where, you know, people have been murdered, is that there's that period where, you know, the, the adjustment, the acceptance and the bereavement ultimately coming to terms. Um, you know, growing up, I, I, I don't know my grandparents, I haven't had grandparents. Um, and we're now in a situation where my grandfather is obviously, we're being railroaded as victims, my mother's being railroaded. I've seen this, um, you know, uh, break Marie down, uh, Marie McCourt, uh, you know, who's the, the bravest of victims out there, genuinely. She's an inspiration for, for many. Um, and I think that, you know, the, the recent decision is an absolute slap in the face for justice. It undermines justice. Um, you know, it, it 
prison shouldn't be a clock watching exercise. These these offenders, part of their rehabilitation is acceptance, in my opinion. You know, and I'm not the only one. There's many MPs, there's many professionals out there who say, you know, killers need to come to terms, they need to accept, they need to um, be able to acknowledge what they've done and be able to move on with that chapter of their lives and allow victims to do exactly the same. Leaving us in limbo isn't acceptable. And Samantha, right at the heart of this, I suppose that and anybody, even people who haven't been through the kind of thing your family has, as Neil quite rightly points, points out, people right, right at the heart of this is that very simple thing that feels like a right of anyone is, is the right to, to bury their loved one. That, that's right at the heart of it. That's what this is. And you, you presumably, that will never change for you. It will never, ever change. You know, we... we you know, we, we, we set out to find my mother and and I fear I'm never ever going to know where my mother is. Mm. Um, and I don't think that it's right. I don't think the parole board are quite listening with regards to the ongoing impact and the fear mm. that, that that's never going to happen. And that somebody that can, can not only commit murder, but also can commit murder and make sure that they take that person away from you forever and that they hold that control and and they and they continue to use that control it's a crime that doesn't quite ever end mm. it's it's continuous and it's hard work you know and all we want is we just want to be able to have our loved ones back and we just want to be able to put them somewhere safe so that we know where they are and um it's upon release as well. It's, you know, what happens when they're released? What happens to the bodies? They can go back and visit the grave that they've created. We can't. Yeah. How is that human? How is, you know, Sims, Causley, my grandfather, he's going, when he dies, when they die, they're going to be, you know, given a burial, but their victims aren't. How is that fair? How is that just in the UK in this year? I think as well that, they, that the parole board also have said that it's arbitrary to keep Sims or my father. They would also say the same thing, is that they would say it's arbitrary to keep those in prison um, and that they might, you know, they might never, they not, might not be able to tell us where the remains are. It isn't a case with regards to the fact of they made that decision. When they committed that crime, they made that decision. Hmm. And, and they have made, they've done everything that they possibly can continually and continued to capture. Yeah, to, to evade capture. Well, Samantha, and if I may. Deceitful. They're deceitful, they're playing the system. Neil, uh, Samantha, really appreciate you. No, no, absolutely. Listen, I, I, a lot of people watching will still be full of empathy for your situation. I know it's not easy to talk about. And thank you for approaching us and sharing the story with us. So many thanks to you. And alongside Mary McCourt as well, of course, when she spoke out, so many people said such bravery in those circumstances. So thank you to both of you. Mm -hmm. oh, thank you. Um, thank you.